Hello everybody, welcome to the Theory Music School. Today's video will focus on the voice leading and part writing of the dominant seventh chord in inversions. The dominant seventh chord, just like the dominant triad, most often resolves to a tonic triad. The part writing regarding the resolution of the dominant seventh chord in inversions to the tonic triad is actually a far easier process than resolving their root position 5-7 counterparts, which will be explored in lesson two. However, in lesson one, we are just going to start with the inversions of the dominant seventh chord as the voice leading allows for a more systematic and perhaps simplified approach. In the example seen here in the key of G major, the chordal root of the dominant seventh chord is D. The chordal third is the F sharp when the chordal third appears in the bass voice as seen in example one, the resulting seventh chord is in first inversion. The chordal fifth appears in the bass voice in example two, and this is a second inversion dominant seventh chord. And finally, in example three, when the chordal seventh appears in the bass voice, the resulting sonority is in third inversion. In resolving each of the chord members of the dominant seventh chord, let the pitches follow their natural tendencies. First, resolve the chordal seventh down by step. In this example, in the key of G major, the dominant seventh chord is in first inversion and the chordal seventh is in the soprano voice and it is moving down by step to the B. Next, resolve the leading tone or the chordal third, if you wanna think of it that way, up by step. In this example, the leading tone is in the bass voice, the F sharp, and it's moving up or resolving up by step to the G. Next, keep the common tone in the same voice. The chordal root of the dominant chord is the D, and this is a common tone with the tonic triad, where the D is the chordal fifth of the tonic triad. Finally, resolve the remaining pitch, the chordal fifth, either up or down by step, depending on the context. In this example, that chordal fifth is the A in the alto voice, and it is moving down by step to the G instead of moving up by step to B because the most likely doubling in this particular context is the chordal root for the root position tonic triad. Follow these steps and tendencies regardless of how the pitches are voiced and regardless of whether the dominant occurs in a major or minor key. Now let us follow the same steps with a second inversion dominant seventh chord. First, resolve the chordal seventh down by step. Again, in this example, the chordal seventh is the C in the soprano voice, and it is progressing down by step to the B. Next, resolve the leading tone up by step. In this example, the leading tone is the F sharp in the alto voice. And finally, keep the common tone in the same voice, which again is the D in the tenor. And lastly, step four, move the remaining pitch, the chordal fifth, up or down by step, depending on the context. As you can see, there are two possible solutions. On the left side of the page, the A moves down by step to the G, creating a root position tonic triad with the likely doubled chordal root. However, on the right side of the page, the chordal fifth moves up by step, forming a first inversion tonic triad with a doubled chordal third. While root position triads often have a doubled chordal root, the doubling of first inversion triads is far more varied. Finally, let us follow the voice leading steps with a third inversion dominant seventh chord. First, resolve the chordal seventh down by step from C to B. This will inevitably result in a first inversion tonic triad as the chordal third of the tonic triad appears in the bass voice as a result of that chordal seventh resolving down by step. Next, resolve the leading tone up by step, which is the F sharp to the G. Then next, retain the common tone in the same voice, which is the D in the tenor voice. Since the 5-4-2 chord almost always resolves to a first inversion tonic triad, again, the result of the chordal seventh resolving down by step, the fourth step offers the same flexible doubling option we encountered before. 
the chordal fifth or scale degree two, depending on how you want to think about it, can move either down by step to the G or up by step to the B. Either answer is acceptable. Here are some examples for you to work out on your own. Follow the steps outlined earlier while completing this exercise. The answers will be revealed in the next video. Thank you very much for watching and please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you would like updates when more videos are posted. Thank you.